Hello friends, welcome back. And in this series, we are going to discuss some of the machine learning models. We will be creating our own models. We will write the code. We will understand each and every line of the code. What are the libraries that we are using? What are the various mathematical concepts that have been involved to understand this? Uh, you know, to uh, you know, to write this model. Before understanding them, you cannot write any kind of uh, such kind of model. You will not be able to make any understanding that how this model is working exactly. Okay, so uh, we are going to start this particular series with the aim to have real uh, life uh, projects, kind of uh, POCs, which we will be creating to have a good hands on for the machine learning exercises. Okay, so uh, this one uh, that we are going to discuss today is related to the uh, sentiment analyzer. So I have written a code for the sentiment analyzer. And uh, with this code, uh, we will be understanding that how we are training the model and how based on our training uh, this model is giving me the responses uh, on my own in, uh, on my own input right so that we are going to see here so let me show you few things like uh, this project i have uh, you know uh, kept in one of the locations let me see where i have placed it yes this is the ml models so here i have placed uh, my uh, code so this is sentiment.py this is the code for me and uh, I will share this code under the comment section. This is a small code. This is not a, such a big code that it will not come to your, uh, you know, comment section. So I will be pin the, I will be pinning the comment. I will pin the comment and I will put the code there. So you can take it from there. You can uh, import required libraries and then you can uh, set it on your system. You can run it. So what I have done, uh, let me uh, show you the code first. So this is the code. So uh, writing this uh, particular language model. Uh, which will be doing the sentiment analysis for me. I have imported uh, the library NLTK, which is a natural language toolkit. And apart from that, we have sklearn. So these are the two libraries only that I have used. sklearn, you already know. If you don't know, you need to know about this sklearn. You should learn, um, you know, about the sklearn, what, uh, what features it provides, what are the facilities it provides to you so that you can write your own machine language models. Similarly, the NLTK, you can go and read about them. I will sh uh, I will tell you a few of the uh, important things related to the NLTK and the other libraries that I have used, like other classes like tokenized class, corpus class, and stream class. All these I have used. So why I have used it? What is the purpose of these uh, classes? Uh, how they help you uh, while you building uh, while you are building a you know a sentiment analyzer, a language model, machine learning model. So all those things we are uh, uh, we are going to discuss. Right. So here is the code. Uh, you need to just copy and paste on your system. Uh, I am using Visual Studio code and uh, uh, I have written this code in the Python. So I'm not going to tell you that how you can set up the Python on your Visual Studio code. I hope you know that. If you don't know that, there are, uh, you know, videos available. You can uh, go through them. My purpose is to show you that how you can create your own model. So just copy paste these lines and I will explain these lines one by one in the coming videos. Okay, so sentiment analyzer, this is the first part of the sentiment analyzer where I'm showing you the demo of this tool that how it is working and what is the, you know, what has been done to develop this. So these are the two libraries that I have used. And after that, I have, uh, you know, uh, you can see that I have imported Panda. There is one more package Panda. So one more package apart from the sklearn and the NLTK, one more package I have used, which is Panda. So I have import Pandas as PD. So I have given it as a alias name PD. And this Panda library, you know that this is used to, you know, process the uh, data which is available in the CSV or the Excel file, right? So I have used this read CSV, uh, you know, function. So in, inside this read CSV function, I have used some sentiment data. So sentiment data means uh, you need to understand that what is the sentiment of any sentence, right? Suppose you get some mails. Uh, you every day get some mail, right? If you are working in an organization, you get the mail, you are aware about the mail. In some of the mails, client is really unhappy. In some of the mails, client is really appreciating you, right? In some mails, client is, you know, just delighted. He is just feeling awesome, right? So all those feelings, all those things he write in the mail. So if we pass this mail and if we pass this mail to our LLM and uh, uh, our language model, and we want that our language models should find out the basic sentiments, which is there in this mail. Uh, so that we can use, right? Uh, so, so that we can use this model, right? So we need to pass the, uh, you know, uh, data, which is the mail or any content, which is uh, some of the feedback from somewhere and you can pass it to our model. And based on the feedback, it can, 
uh, you know based on the feedback that you have um, given to it based on the based on the data it will uh, reach uh, to the feedback in the content it will give you the response that what is the sentiment but before that we need to train our model it will not just work you need to train it so i have put some train date uh, for some data for training so that data i have placed in the sentiment underscore data dot csv so let us open that file so this is the sentiment underscore data dot csv file if i open this in the excel then you can see there are two columns one column is sentiment and the other column is text in the sentiment column i have given the one for the positive sentiments i have given minus one for the negative sentiments i have given zero for the neutral sentiments and i have given two for the suggestive somewhere where the client is suggestive or somewhere client is saying that it's okay but you can uh, improve uh, improve this thing or you can enhance this product by this manner in this manner so these are the four sentiments that i have covered so uh, the text i have given so based on the text i have given the sentiments like if if someone is saying great job then it means that the sentiment is positive so based on few of the uh, samples like what what are those lines what are those textual contents uh, which in uh, which uh, indicates that it's a positive feedback or it's a positive sentiment uh, those have been given here maybe in future i need to give more that is known as the training continuous training continuous involvement of the machine so here i have given at la at least i think uh, there are you know 80 83 uh, sentiment samples i have given so with these 83 sample sentiments i have uh, i am just going to train my model that if these are the things if these are the things then this will be the rating this will be the sentiment so that it can identify that uh, you know uh, based on the content i can identify some of the sentiment so i am training it maybe 83 is not sufficient maybe there i need to write more right so all these things i need to do i need to train the model i need to collect more sample data i need to collect more data from my organization from my manager that can you give me some mails from where i can see uh, some other uh, you know a uh, kind of sentences which customer has used to show his frustration right so all those things i can ask my manager and i can put the data here i can put the sample here this is the training data i need to put that here in the two columns so i can keep uh, you know updating my uh, training set or uh, whatever i training data i am preparing so after preparing the data i am just uh, you know uh, uh, loading this data into uh, local uh, into local cache in this program and that uh, then after that uh, through the uh, na natural language toolkit i have downloaded few of the packages one package is uh, punkt and uh, punkt p u n k t i am not sure how to pronounce it uh, and then the other one is uh, wordnet the other one is stop words so we will understand that what is the meaning of stop words wordnet and punkt in the uh, coming videos but just understand as of now that these are helping to tokenize the data which i am providing for the training in a much efficient manner how it makes it efficient that we are going to discuss in the coming videos where we will understand that what is the purpose of this particular package what is the purpose of wordnet package what is the purpose of stop words package so that we are going to discuss in the coming videos and after that lemmatizer lemmatizer is basically to find out the root word right so uh, this is again the method of uh, you know uh, a method of efficiently tokenizing the things right so lemmatizer means finding out the root word suppose if i say dancing danced you danced you are dancing ultimately it's dance right so every token cannot be taken separately like dancing cannot be a separate token danced cannot be a separate token dance cannot be a separate token i all i can take is one token which is dance right so lemmatizer is just used to find out the root word right that also we are going to discuss like what is the lament uh, lamenting what is the lemmatizer right in the coming videos then i have written a function uh, processes text this is the function which is basically uh, which will be basically processing the text which text that you will provide this text is not something which is coming from the training data this is the text that you are giving after training the model i want to see if this is working or not so for testing i will pass something to my function i i need to write some piece of code using which i can find out whether my system is working properly or not whether my machine learning model is giving me proper results or not so in that case this processes text function will be taking the uh, you know input and after that it will be tokenizing it and after tokenizing it will process all the thing lamentizing the things and then it will apply uh, the you know uh, apply the things to the data set new data set which will be the 
uh, uh, final output set, right? So it will be doing all these things. So here, if you see uh, all these things, we are going to discuss like this, these are basic things that you might be aware if you are aware about the machine learning things. And if you are watching my videos on the machine learning, uh, they are possibly in Hindi in the same on the same channel. So you can go through this, those videos and you can see that what is the meaning of the training set and test set, right? Basically, training set is different and test set is to trace the uh, uh, model uh, which, uh, which I have prepared with the test uh, with the test data so that we can find out what is the efficiency, what is the correctness of my model, right? So for that, we, uh, you know, split the data into two parts, but one is this training part and one uh, another one is the test part, right? And now the other one is like vectorize the text data into TF, IDF, all these things we are going to discuss. Basically, uh, here we are uh, transforming the data as per the mathematical model, a statistical model, distribution, probability distribution, based on that, it finds the best, uh, you know, fit algorithm and uh, it transforms the things for you, uh, for the model, right, for you uh, and uh, it will do all the regression, just like uh, we have discussed uh, in some of the videos in other, uh, uh, in other um, uh, playlists where we have discussed like how to find out the value of uh, M and C, right, Y is equal to MX plus C is the equation of line and we have to find out, uh, you know, based on some certain data that what will be the perfect line, what will be the line which will be predicting more accurate results. So, for that we had to find out the uh, value of M and C. For that we had to, you know, arrange our lines, uh, you know, in different manner so that we can do a proper regression. So, in that regression it may be 100 times you need to repeat the same uh, things, right. So, all those repetitive tasks where it need to find out the most accurate line or most accurate equation which can predict it easily and correctly most accurately for that it this function fit transform is called right and then the transformation all these things we are going to discuss in the uh, you know coming videos and after that you can say uh, you can see the vectorization has been done and then here uh, at line number 51 we have used the uh, bayes classifier neve bayes classifier bayes algorithm uh, or Bayes theorem uh, related to the probability you might have understood. You might have read in your college days or if you are doing the machine learning, then you might be aware about the, uh, you know, Bayes theorem. So, Bayes theorem is basically related to the conditional probability. Conditional probability means some uh, probability of, uh, of some event to happen if some other event has already happened or not happened, right? If some event has already happened, then what is the probability of other event to happen? Something like that. That is known as the conditional probability. So, that conditional probability uh, theorem related to probability is known as the Bayes theorem. That we are going to discuss in the coming days, uh, in the coming videos, right? But today, I am just going to, uh, I am just going through the piece of code that I have written here. And after that, we have fit the, our uh, training set and, uh, you know, uh, the train data, train model. And after that, we have uh, written a function predict sentiment, right? So it will predict our sentiments. So basically, that text will be, uh, you know, passed to the function here. Uh, that function on the top processes text. Basically, this text is uh, uh, all for processing. I uh, uh, sorry for that. I just uh, made a mistake here. Yeah. I was telling you that this is taking the input. No, it is not taking the input. It is basically taking the data that you have uh, used uh, for the training purpose, this data that I have shown you in the Excel sheet, this particular Excel sheet, this sentiment data.csv, this is used uh, here to process it, to tokenize it, to properly arrange it, okay? And then the transformation we have done. And now the last function, this is the function predict sentiment. This will, this text, this is the text that you are going to pass as an input so that you can find out the result, uh, you know, uh, based on the uh, training done to your model. So, in this function predict sentiment, I am just going to put my input and after that input, whatever output it is returning, which will be either 1 or 0 or minus 1 or 2, whatever it will be, this will return the output to me. So, let me run it, right? So, here at the line number 62, it will ask you for providing a piece of, uh, you know, sentence which will be having some kind of sentiment and based on the training done, it will return you the result, whether the sentiment is positive, negative or neutral or suggestive or any kind of improvement have been suggested. So, let me run it. So, if I run it, now it has started. A bit slow, so just wait for it.
I think this has been somehow got stuck. Now, now it has been started again. I need to run it again and let us see what it does. Okay. So it has uh, downloaded all the packages. It is showing you that it is downloading the package and then finally it is asking you to put some sentence. Suppose I put a sentence here. I was not expecting this delay in response. Now it is giving me minus one. It's a kind of concern. It's kind of negative sentiment that I'm not happy. Client is not happy that he's not, he was not expecting this much delay. So it has given me minus one, which is a negative sentiment. And for the suggestive sentiment or for the any, uh, for any positive, uh, for any uh, non, uh, for any suggestive feedback, or you can say non-concerning feedback, just some inputs or just some enhancement, we have given two. So let me write something which is kind of suggestive. I, okay, let me run it again because it needs to be run again. I will convert it into uh, such a way that uh, it will just ask you again and again. If you want to quit, then only it will quit. So here I'm just going to write, I would suggest, I would recommend to add few more, few more samples. The it is good as of now. Okay, so it has given me one. So it has given me the positive feedback. Like it's a positive feedback that yes, customer is good, but yeah, he's, uh, you know, I have used the word good, right? So it has uh, taken the weightage or to this word good, right? So if I just write, I would recommend to add few more samples, then let us see what happens. I would recommend to use some more samples. So it has given me minus one. So it means that any kind of recommendation word we have not used in our training model so that it under it can understand that it is a recommendation or it is a suggestion. So because of that, it is taking it as a concern as a negative uh, you know feedback kind of thing. So it is taking it as negative that I would recommend to use some more samples, right? So based on that, because this kind of line could have been written, you should use this, you should do that. So th those kind of things are under uh, coming under complaint. So let me do one more thing. Let me open uh, this particular sentiment data and let me make it suggestive now. So here I will I will give two. It is, it will be recommended, suggested to use, wait, let's use more examples. Okay, one more I can use, two, it will be, a, it is a suggestion to show some more samples not samples basically some more examples or anything rather than suggestion i should use recommendation or i can say like i would recommend rather than recommendation i would use recommend i would recommend okay now let me save it and now let me run my program again so that i can again train my model in this new uh, under this new training data okay so now i'm running it and let us see with this new training data what it be, how it behaves right so i'm just going to write let me i would recommend to add few more examples though it is look uh, though it is good as of now let me see okay now it has given me two because recommend word i have used now uh, for suggestions for feedback right and uh, the same thing you can do with the you know suggestions so this is the way you can keep testing your model and you can keep upgrading your model so that it can it can identify the uh, sentiments uh, you know easily so i hope you might be understanding this you just need uh, with this particular piece of code you just need some good amount of data related to the sentiments and one more thing i would like to say you can ask meta ai or any ai 
to generate some kind of um, uh, sentiment, uh, you know, some kind of sentences which reflect some positive sentiment or which reflect some negative sentiment, which reflect some uh, recommendation kind of thing. So you can ask Meta AI or any AI for that matter. You can ask it and you can, uh, you know, collect that data for your samples. You can keep collecting. You can have thousands uh, of records, such records, so that you can have some diverse kind of uh, data set uh, to train. Okay, but the thing is that you should not repeat any of the sentences. So, uh, let, uh, you can see uh, whether your model is, uh, you know, uh, able to give you the response in those many tokens. If no, then I would suggest you to buy some plan. It's very, uh, you know, uh, it's very economical. I think uh, in the ten dollars you can uh, buy some, uh, you know, uh, some kind of uh, uh, token-based license uh, for the Chat GPT. In the ten dollars, you will be able to find uh, a good, uh, you know, you will be able to purchase a good license. Uh, for using the chat GPT, there you can ask the question and you can have the samples related, related to the, uh, you know, sentiments. So you can ask thousands of records so that it can generate unique thousand records for you. Okay. And you can use that record here. So uh, otherwise you can um, put your, put your questions here. You can put your, uh, you know, input here. And uh, based on that, you can see whether your model is uh, giving correct result or not. If it is not giving correct result, then train your model more. You give more inputs. Right, similar inputs and, it, uh, and, you, and you train it. Right, so I hope you might have understood this. This is uh, a really a good piece of code uh, that you can use with you uh, with your program. And I will share this piece of code under the comment section, and um, uh, I will pin that. And I would request one thing that please subscribe my channel. Uh, you know, uh, just uh, like this like this video and share it with your friends if you like it. So uh, with this, I would like to say have a nice day and bye bye. Keep watching the space, and uh, I will come back again.